Next week is World Space Week, and today I'm going to share with you some fascinating and groundbreaking pieces of music associated with outer space. My talk, like the night sky, is going to be sprinkled with points of light in the form of information and trivia, while hopefully avoiding gas giants of confusion and black holes of boredom. The piece that you heard at the start of this video is called Appel Interstellar, or Interstellar Calls, by French composer Olivier Messiaen. Messiaen's De Canyon aux Etoiles was inspired by the birds and landscapes of Bryce Canyon in Utah in the USA. His Interstellar Calls movement evokes those vast landscapes and calm spaces played by the solo horn, which is my instrument. Some of the unusual playing techniques in this movement include the use of large intervals or notes spaced wide apart, flutter tongue, stopped horn, where you close off the bell with the hand and you get a sound like this, and this eerie effect created by pressing down all three valves halfway and making Chewbacca noises. These effects, combined with some heavy doses of religious symbolism and birdsong, generate the notion that the call of the movement's title is for outer space, or indeed, for God himself. Messian's synesthesia, or the ability to see color from sound, was shared by Hungarian composer Giorgio Ligeti, who said, Major chords are red or pink, and minor chords are somewhere in between green and brown. Ligeti became mainstream in 1968, when Hollywood film director Stanley Kubrick used his music for his groundbreaking film, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Here is an excerpt of Atmospheres, which was used to evoke the mysteries of outer space in the film. And now, the shockingly interesting historical fact about this piece. Ligeti had no idea that his music was used in this film. Kubrick had simply ripped off things without asking for permission. At the time the movie was released, Ligeti was so poor that he had to hitchhike to music festivals that were playing his music in concerts, and he didn't even have enough money to afford a cup of coffee. One day, somebody stopped him and said, Did you know that there's a movie with your music in it? Ligeti sued Kubrick and received $3,000, but he liked the film and he allowed Kubrick to use his music in later work. After all, Kubrick's 2001 put him on the map and made him famous. Ligeti's music used in 2001 A Space Odyssey must have inspired thousands of people to listen to difficult music or even to become musicians themselves. As a child, my tastes were a bit simpler, and I got my influences mainly from cartoons, especially those of Warner Brothers' Looney Tunes. In keeping with Space Week, I bring to you... Duck Dodgers in the 24th and a half century! Warner Brothers musical director Carl Stalling uses a technique borrowed from Disney called Mickey Mousing. Ha <laughs> ha! According to the dubiously reliable Wikipedia, Mickey Mousing is a film technique that synchronizes the accompanying music with the actions on screen, matching the movement to the music, or the exact segmentation of music analog to the picture. Used widely in cartoons in the 1930s and 40s, the music almost completely mimics the characters. Let's see how the technique is used in...
And now, this planet is hereby claimed for the Earth in the name of Duck Dodgers in the 24th and a half century! It'll be a big deal. Mickey Mousing wasn't only used in cartoons. It was used in the 1933 Hollywood film King Kong, the 1942 Casablanca, and in 1962's James Bond classic Dr. No, in which James Bond repeatedly strikes a tarantula which has crawled into his bed. I would show you this clip, but it's really scary. Film music throughout the ages has pushed boundaries and introduced new music to generations of popcorn-munching punters. Every adult watching this video will know the correct response to FLUSH! Flush. Yes, of course, it's ah, And the music in question is from the film soundtrack of Flash Gordon, set in futuristic outer space. See what I did there, World Space Week? The soundtrack, which reached number 10 in the UK charts, was written and performed by UK rock legends Queen. Queen's work on Flash Gordon was kept top secret until the film's release in December of 1980. The band embraced the opportunity to create a fervent mix of rock and progressive electronica using their trademark rock guitars combined with lavish synthesizer accompaniment, which was entirely suited to the sci-fi movie soundtrack. They were given free reign to do exactly what they long wanted as long as it complemented the picture. It was a first in many ways because a rock group had never done anything like this before. Enough talk, let's listen to some Queen! I hope that you've found today's academic lecture fun and interesting, and that you've learned a few things about music, from Messian's use of birdsong and extended techniques for the horn, and his and Ligeti's synesthesia and how it affected their music. You've heard how Ligeti was exploited by Hollywood, but then later became famous for his atmospheric music, and how cartoons employ the technique of Mickey Mousing to show everything from eye blinks to pillow throwing. We even got to hear a bit of Freddy and his bass ostinato and close harmonies. Happy Space Week! Bye for now!